Welcome back. The South Florida Museum now has a new aquarium director, months after the death of its most famous resident, Snooty. Virginia Edmonds took over the post back in November and has hit the ground running. ABC 7's Rick Adams joins us live from the South Florida Museum with more details. Rick? Yeah, guys, good evening. This continues to be a major attraction. The new director here has a lot of folks very excited. Virginia Edmonds has decades of experience working with manatees at a zoo in Tampa. Now she's looking to keep Snooty's legacy alive with improvements and lots of improvements to the program. In the future, next few years, we're hoping to to build some new pools and and look at those as rehabilitation pools for new patients, brand new patients that could come in rather than being a second stage, but maybe being able to develop into a critical care center. And just for the record, there are currently two manatees here with one of them expected to be released sometime next month. Reporting live from Bradenton, I'm Rick Adams. Back to you. Okay, thank you so much, Rick. New details tonight in the disturbing shark dragging video that went viral this summer. The three men charged in connection to that video were in court today. Bradenton man Robert Banak and Palmetto men Spencer Hines and Michael Wenzel pleading not guilty. This after a video surfaced showing a shark tied by a rope around its tail being dragged behind a boat. If convicted, they face up to five years in jail, five years probation, and a $5,000 fine. The three men bonded out of jail last month, and another court appearance is expected in March. After the Trump administration announced Tuesday it will not allow oil drilling off the coast of Florida, Mo Marine Labs president and CEO speaking out in favor of that decision, as you might expect. Dr. Michael Crosby calling the move logical for the economy and sustainability of our ecosystem. Crosby says oil drilling can have a huge impact on Florida fisheries, which is a billion-dollar industry. You can have um, impacts at multiple levels, um, impacts that obviously can destroy a given population uh, of, of, say, fish in a certain area that's been oiled or there's been some dispersion put in, but it's the longer term impacts of the trophic dynamics and upsetting that. Um, if you pull one piece of the puzzle out, um, all the other pieces can collapse. Crosby says Florida dodged a bullet after the BP oil spill back in 2010. Had the Gulf currents been normal at that time, the spill could have spread much farther down the coast, possibly even impacting the Florida Keys. Tuesday's decision was a change of heart for the administration, which last week announced plans to open the Gulf Coast and parts of the East Coast to oil exploration. The frustration over a lack of hurricane shelters in Venice continues. About 400 people took refuge at the Venice Community Center when Hurricane Irma hit in September as a last resort. But now the Venice Fire Chief says not all of the windows in that center were replaced with impact-resistant windows when it was remodeled more than a decade ago. The center wasn't even suitable as a shelter for a weaker storm. So far, two schools have been identified as possible shelter sites, but no other progress has been made. The discussion is expected to be brought up once again during a January 23rd meeting. A Suncoast climate change scientist has a grim prediction for what the Suncoast will look like in the year 2100. Dr. Terry Root won the Nobel Peace Prize in 2007 for her work on climate assessment report number four. Her work helped inspire former Vice President Al Gore's Oscar award-winning documentary, an inconvenient truth. Now, Dr. Root predicts the water level worldwide could rise nine feet over the next 100 years. That would put much of Longboat Key, Anna Maria Island, and Venice underwater. We have got to stop putting greenhouse gases in the atmosphere, or we've got to figure out how to get them out of the atmosphere. And the only way we know how to do that right now is by chlorophyll, by plants. Coming up on ABC 7 News at 7, we'll hear more from Dr. Root and we'll examine how climate change has turned into a political conversation. Hmm, sounds like an interesting report. Looking mm -hmm. forward to that. Well, let's check in with Chief Meteorologist Bob Harrigan for a look at our first alert forecast.
Well, currently it's 73 degrees right now and taking a look at what's happening. We have that fog forming once again. Uh, temperatures and dew point temperatures have to come together and skies have to be generally clear. We have that and west winds are at eight. The winds uh, typically lessen somewhat when we have the fog form. You can see we have also an upper level to mid level low moving through the Florida Straits and through the Bahamas along the east coast. All that rain kind of drifting off to the west northwest. We're not going to get any of that into Manatee and Sarasota counties, but Highlands County Already starting to see some of that rainfall, but notice it is weakening as it pushes off toward the west. Some moderate to heavier rainfall earlier, and now that is uh, pushing toward the eastern portions of Hardy and DeSoto counties. Not going to make it all the way over here as the mid-level low kind of uh, moves away from the upper level low. Well, the fog will be around. It's uh, kind of hanging offshore right now. That fog will increase throughout the evening and become an issue tomorrow morning with uh, winds relatively light, but coming out of the east and pushing that and making some uh, sea fog, a pretty thick sea fog out there as well. And then we'll be back again tomorrow night uh, for another showing. Some drier air will slip in over the weekend, getting rid of the fog, but bringing in some cooler temperatures. More on that coming up in just a few minutes. Back to you. Thank you, Bob. A Louisiana teacher is handcuffed and arrested at a school board meeting, and it's all caught on tape. The school board president says the teacher was out of line, but as ABC's Elizabeth Hur reports, the ACLU is now investigating, calling the arrest unconstitutional. This arrest caught on camera, dividing a community in Abbeville, Louisiana. Stop resisting. I am not. Stop you resisting. just pushed me to the floor. The woman seen here, handcuffed and oh, taken to jail, is Daisha Hargrave, a middle school teacher who just minutes earlier. You're making our job even more difficult. Was inside a school board meeting, voicing her concern over the superintendent's new pay raise. raise. I feel like it's a slap in the face to all the teachers, uh, cafeteria. The board first warning Hargrave this was a time for public comments only. Then when Hargrave tried to ask a second question, a deputy marshal moved in. Excuse me. Is it against policy to stand? Sir, do not. Escorting Hargrave out of the meeting and arresting her out in the hallway. The local teachers union is now planning a rally for Thursday to support her and her decision of not being silent while the school board president is defending the arrest. If a teacher has the authority to send a student who is acting up in the classroom and she can't control out of the classroom to the principal's office under our policy we have the same rules. Hargrave was arrested by Abbeville police for resisting an officer, but the city attorney and prosecutor say after watching this video, they won't be filing any charges against her. Elizabeth Herr, ABC News, New York. A push to eliminate the state's no-fault auto insurance system gaining momentum in Tallahassee today. That's amid concerns that the change would not significantly lower rates. The Senate Banking and Insurance Committee voting to support a repeal of the law, which requires drivers to carry $10,000 in personal injury protection coverage to help pay medical expenses after accidents. I'm trying to make sure we don't raise premiums on Floridians, but by the same token that we protect as much um, as many options for consumers to get medical care um, in the event of an accident. So it's a you know it's a balancing act. A lobbyist for State Farm Insurance opposes the repeal, saying that the system will remain costly and inefficient. The proposal must still go before two more committees before reaching the Senate floor. A U.S.-based company wants to do what has eluded so many, find the wreckage of Malaysia Airlines Flight 370. It was headed from Kuala Lumpur to Beijing when it vanished back in 2014 with 239 people on board. Suspected debris from the plane has been found across the Indian Ocean. Now, Ocean Infinity has agreed to pick up the hunt one year after Australia, China and Malaysia ended their own searches. It's apparently a no-find, no-fee deal that means if the plane is not found, Ocean Infinity does not get paid. Still to come in your Suncoast News, ABC 7's Linda Carson will show us what's going on locally here in the Suncoast scene. Coming up, we'll tell you why everybody at the Oslo is celebrating the opening of Shakespeare in Love. There's never been a better time to call California Closets. Now, during our Winter White event, save up to 15% when you upgrade to an Italian-inspired wood grain finish. Contact us for your free design consultation today. Visit our showroom or online at californiaclosets.com.
SRQ Performance Parts provides parts and accessories from over 300 manufacturers, so you can get that new manifold, carburetor, gasket, bolt kit, or nitrous oxide system fast. We'll help you beat the competition. Call or visit SRQ Performance Parts online today for all your high-performance parts and advice. My name is Stefan Campagna. We're Ben Gates and Dramus, and here is your Law Tip of the Week. If you've been injured in a car accident, the state of Florida only gives you a specific amount of time to file a claim. So act now, give us a call. It's time to take a road trip. Alabama's got a hundred road trips, and some will take you back in time to the Civil Rights Movement or even the Civil War. Your boys play nice now. From Helen Keller to Hamlet. Check out these big guns. We're talking the USS Alabama. Alabama's got a hundred road trips. Plan yours at alabama.travel. Which one you gonna take? Attention, Americans eligible for Medicare. Are you getting all the benefits you're entitled to? Did you know there may be money available to lower your medical prescription costs? Call Health Markets and we'll tell you if you qualify. Hi, I'm Dr. Martin Jitsi. It's a new Medicare year. That means more changes and more confusion. The key question is, what can you do now to ensure you get the care you need in the coming year? Call Health Markets today. You may qualify to save money on prescriptions. We'll help you find plans that may cost less, cover more, and could even lower your prescription costs to increase your savings. We help you find all the benefits you're entitled to, and we do it at no cost. Make sure you have what you need to get the care that's right for you. Find out if you qualify to receive extra help with your prescriptions. Call the number on the screen now. Representatives are standing by. The classic film Singing in the Rain is coming to the Player Center in a live stage show opening January 17th. All the dances and all the songs you've come to know and love, all a part of our wild Broadway series. Get your tickets now for this limited run by calling the players at 365-2494 or visit us online at theplayers.org. You too can be Singing in the Rain! There's never been a better time to call California Closets. Now during our Winter White event, save up to 15% when you upgrade to an Italian-inspired wood grain finish. Contact us for your free design consultation today. Visit our showroom or online at californiaclosets.com. It is season on the Sun Coast, and many venues are rolling out great entertainment to lure audiences their way. In the spotlight tonight, the Oslo Rep presents Shakespeare in Love. ABC 7's Linda Carson has more details. The Oslo Rep kicks off its winter season with a stage adaptation of Shakespeare in Love. Now, before you shrug and say Shakespeare's just too stuffy and old-fashioned, this is a whole new version of Will Shakespeare. Will Shakespeare, struggling to come up with a great new piece, um, is inspired uh, by, by Viola, this woman he meets, who he falls head over heels in love with. Um, and the adventures and misadventures, they... they they go on together, but also William Shakespeare becoming William Shakespeare. And it deals with some of the same life issues that we face today. The heart of it is is making the choice of love over fear. Laura Rook plays Viola, the woman Shakespeare falls in love with. She's a woman who is willing to break all of the rules. So when her parents try to force her into an unwanted marriage, her solution... She dresses up like a boy and she um, auditions for a play and uh, gets away with it and is kind of accidentally really good at it and a really good actor in convincing other people that she's a man and also that she's an actor. Shakespeare, of course, is smitten. And the story also plays on familiar phrases and details that you find in Shakespeare's work. What brings you to my house? I came to seek one who would make my words as fluent as the river. It taps into plot lines in Shakespeare's own writing, like mistaken identities. I find it incredibly smart, funny. And uh, also, there's, I mean, farcical in a way. It, it, we have everything. We have situational comedy. We have farcical humor. Um, and then we have um, uh, wit and, and wordplay. Jordan says deep down, it's about the importance of the arts in our lives. At its core, that's what it's really about. Um, advocating the arts 
I think how out. important the arts are in holding a mirror up to society and finding something for every human being. You know, every stranger who comes in and chooses to sit in a dark theater and watch something live happening on stage. And he says Shakespeare in Love is a play you do not want to miss. People have to come see this play because it's got everything. It, it's got uh, humor, it's got romance, it's got drama, it's got a dog, it's got a fantastic child actor, um, it's got uh, dancing, sword fighting, um, the scaling of 25-foot balconies. Shakespeare in Love at the Oslo Rep now through March 28th. And believe it or not, when you get to know Shakespeare in this play, he's a really funny guy. He'll have you in stitches. Linda Carson, ABC7, your Suncoast News. Now your ABC7 first alert weather forecast with Chief Meteorologist Bob Harrigan. Here's what it looked like out over Sarasota Bay. And I can tell you it was like that. It took us some video this morning with Captain Johnny Walker. And visibility is down to less than a quarter of a mile at times out over the water. That's dangerous. And you'll see even at 930, still fog, but it's starting to lift a little bit. And then by uh, really 1030, 11 o'clock, it was uh, moving on out and sunshine by noon and temperatures warming rapidly. Highs today were into the upper 70s and a gorgeous sunset tonight with clear skies, but fog on the horizon once again. Weather headlines read like this. It will stay warm uh, through Thursday and Friday, but more fog tonight. The cold front comes in late Friday afternoon, Friday evening, and a clear but cooler weekend ahead. We will see kind of breezy conditions on Saturday. Uh, the uh, cold front itself will bring some rain our way, but it looks like mainly Friday late and into early Saturday morning. That's the timing of the showers now associated with the next cold front for this evening. Mid 60s staying pretty uniform right up until 11 o'clock with that fog really starting to develop uh, near 11 and after that. We have an upper level and mid level low kind of spinning around through the Bahamas. You can see that uh, with that little twist in the atmosphere and the clouds rotating off to the north and east as it continues to do so. It will weaken. It has produced some rainfall though along the east coast now into central Florida into Highlands County into eastern portions of Hardy and DeSoto counties, but not a lot of rain. Uh, for the coastal communities. It will stay uh, dry uh, through midday Friday, 73 right now, and the dew point temperature is at 64. Winds out of the west at 8. High today, well, there it is, 77 degrees. Despite the fog, it's still warmed up to 77, and 63 was the morning low, running well above average. We'll see similar temperatures for us on Thursday. Uh, no rainfall report today, 1.12 inches of rain for the month now. That is, again, pretty close to average. As far as the future cast goes, that rain staying to the east and to the south of us tonight and tomorrow. And then uh, by, again, Thursday, look for a few showers as that low still hanging on. The mids upper low still hanging on across the eastern portion of the state, then pushing off into the Atlantic and weakening. For us, the big deal will be the fog. We'll have the fog around in the morning. Could be rather thick. It's really difficult to pinpoint it in the exact areas, but I think most of the coast will see that fog form and it will be rather thick at times. We'll wait for the National Weather Service to issue an advisory, but I can advise you that if you have an early trip plan in the morning, you better allow for some extra time because it can slow traffic down a bit. And we're looking for that fog to be back again Thursday night, Friday morning. Then we'll be done with it. Over the weekend, it, it moves out of here as some drier air slips in and that dew point temperature really goes down and we'll see that happening both on Saturday and Sunday. Well, across the U.S., things are fairly quiet from Texas all the way over to Georgia. Just a few spotty showers there. That major storm in California now has pushed into the central Rockies and the northeast seeing a brief storm there. But for the most part, uh, this has just been some light freezing rain up there in parts of Canada. Temperature 33 in Boston. Look at that balmy 45 in Pittsburgh, 55 in Columbus. Uh, they're going to pay for it, though. They've got snow coming to Ohio and Pennsylvania, and right now it's six. Cold air also expected to move into the Great Lakes. Six now in Billings, 57 in Oklahoma City, and Atlanta now at 64 degrees. Birmingham at 64 as well. So temperature's pretty warm uh, over much of the eastern third of the nation, but that's all soon to change now as that colder air will slip in across the Sun Coast as well as much of the eastern U.S., but nothing like they're going to see uh, over much of the eastern third of the nation. 56 there now in Cleveland. That's the high tomorrow. 55 in Detroit. Boy, they're seeing some very warm temperatures there, but all coming to a change, as I said over the weekend. Sea fog developing tonight. Some of that could be rather thick again tomorrow. Uh, seas will be running two feet or less. The extended forecast shapes up like this. 
77 for your high tomorrow. Fog in the morning. We'll see the same conditions we saw today. 40% chance of rain, but don't cancel your morning tea times. It uh, looks like we'll be okay. The afternoon and evening, start to see some showers. The rain chance at 40%, a little higher in the evening. Breezy conditions on Saturday, clearing and turning cooler. Highs only in the low 60s, riding in through Wednesday. And low temperatures down into the low to mid 40s. So we go below average last week, above average this week, and then below average next week. Flip-flopping back and forth. Back to you. All right, thank you so much, Bob. Time now to check your first alert traffic for the drive home. There are no major accidents delaying drivers right now. We are seeing some slowdowns, though, heading northbound. That's between Bradenton and Whitney Beach. We're also seeing some slowdowns on I-75 near the University Parkway exit. Scott? Thank you, Jacqueline. Some cool new tech is being in, unveiled this week at the 2018 Consumer Technology Conference in Las Vegas. And a lot of that tech is centering around virtual reality. Take a look at this. One ring to rule them all. A tech startup called Titanium Falcon has taken the wraps off its new motion controller, the Talon Ring. This ring can control video games on multiple gaming platforms and can be used to control smart home devices such as smart light bulbs. With a simple swipe in the air, you can change the color of the bulb. Oh. And another cool digital tool being unveiled in Las Vegas this week, a camera scanner that can make a 3D mask of your face. The idea is that it could be used for a more advanced gaming experience, creating a virtual avatar, or it could just be a very accurate picture of yourself. The whole process takes just about 15 seconds. Well, if you ever wanted to travel back in time, well, pretty soon you may get a taste of what it would be like. A virtual reality device called TimeScope was unveiled this week in Vegas. This device allows users to view visualizations of historical sites as they could have appeared in the past, just like looking through binoculars as you would at any landmark. Fifteen of the devices are all already installed across France, and the company is working to deploy more in the months ahead. Wow, that is pretty neat. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. Entertainment News is next. Stay with us. It's time to go boating, but first, don't miss the 17th Annual Charlotte County Boat Show January 11th to the 14th at the Charlotte County Fairgrounds. Show admission is free and on-site parking is only $5 January 11th through the 14th. Visit GoBoatingFlorida.com for more information. They're coming from Tampa, Fort Myers, even Orlando. They're coming from everywhere for the Sarasota Ford Promise. Our promise means a new car you'll love. If not, return it for one you do. At Sarasota Ford, we promise live market pricing. We monitor national pricing on our entire inventory so you get the best deal. In fact, we guarantee it. Bring us any competitor's ad and we'll beat it by at least $1,000. That's why they're coming from everywhere to Sarasota Ford, where 41 meets 301. SarasotaFord.com. About every three minutes in America, someone is diagnosed with a blood cancer. Light the Night brings together survivors and supporters to bring light to the darkness of cancer and to help fund life-saving research. Our goal is a world without blood cancers, and we're lighting the path to cures. The discoveries made in blood cancer research have led to breakthrough treatments for many cancers and other serious diseases. Help defeat the darkness of cancer. Join Light the Night today. Meet Blue. Blue's not feeling well. The prescription? Generic medication. Blue wonders, do they really work as well as name brands? Yes, generics and name brand medications do work the same. Even though they may look different, generics have the same key ingredients. FDA approval is equally rigorous for generics to make sure they're as safe and effective as name brands. And Blue even saves some green, making him a little less, well, blue. Talk to your doctor about generics and visit FDA.gov slash generic drugs. Watch ABC7 wherever you are. Just search ABC7 on your streaming device to keep up with the Sun Coast from the comfort of your couch. Download ABC7 now to watch us on TV anytime you want. ABC7, we're here for you wherever you are.
It's time to go boating, but first, don't miss the 17th annual Charlotte County Boat Show, January 11th to the 14th at the Charlotte County Fairgrounds. Show admission is free and on-site parking is only $5, January 11th through the 14th. Visit GoBoatingFlorida.com for more information. Actor James Franco going on The Late Show with Stephen Colbert last night to say the sexual misconduct claims against him are not accurate. Controversy ignited when Franco wore a Time's Up pin in his Golden Globes acceptance speech on Sunday. The Time's Up movement calls for an end to sexual abuse and other forms of abuse against women. Social media users commenting that Franco should not have worn that pin because he's accused of sexual misconduct. According to the New York Times, text messages appeared online in 2014 suggesting Franco tried to sleep with a 17-year-old girl. And Willie Nelson is back in Texas recuperating after canceling all his concerts this week. The 84-year-old country music legend had barely started his opening song over the weekend before abruptly ending his performance. Several concert goers saying Nelson was coughing and seemed to be experiencing some difficulty breathing as he left the stage during Risky Whiskey River at Sarah Harris Resort in Southern California. Since all, since all his concerts for the week have been canceled. The next reality TV celebrity could be NFL star quarterback Tom Brady, the five-time Super Bowl winner, releasing a documentary series on something called Facebook Watch, which is called Tom vs. Time. Six episodes will showcase Brady's pursuit of a sixth championship ring and personal aspects of his home life. Brady's wife, three children, and parents are also a big part of the series and will share their personal feelings. A release date for that series, though, has not been announced yet. Tina Turner, Neil Diamond, and Queen, these are the legendary artists the Recording Academy is honoring with the Lifetime Achievement Awards this year. Known as the Queen of Rock and Roll, the energetic Tina Turner has sold more than 50 million albums during her celebrated career, which began in the 1950s. While Neil Diamond has sold more than 130 million albums, and 38 of his songs became top 40 singles. And Queen is one of the top 10 best-selling artists on iTunes. There will be a special concert and an award ceremony for the winners this summer. Certainly well-deserved for all three of them. Yeah, it's a tri quite a trifecta right. there. Yeah, they're good. We'll be right back with more news and your forecast. Stay with us. There's never been a better time to call California Closets. Now, during our winter white event, save up to 15% when you upgrade to an Italian-inspired wood grain finish. Contact us for your free design consultation today. Visit our showroom or online at californiaclosets.com. I was always worried and scared. Mom was in pain. She wasn't going to get any better, and all the trips to the ER were painful for all of us. Then we called Tidewell Hospice, and everything changed. Now she has care in our home when she needs it, surrounded by family. We know we don't have much time left with mom, but we decided to make the best out of that time. Tidewell Hospice, it's more than you think.